Is this the most radical shakeup facing America's EV market? Perhaps Zero Pollution Motors' new AirPod 2.0 offers an affordable, green, and entirely funky alternative, setting it apart from all previous offerings. This is an absolute contrast with the very foundations on which the electric vehicle market in the United States rests. Does it say enough to make the AirPod 2.0 an EV disruptor? This video says it all about the AirPod 2.0 and why it might be a nightmare for the EV industry. Let me underscore that the AirPod 2.0 is not an electric car. The AirPod 2.0 stands out in the current frenetic push for electrification. It runs on neither gasoline nor batteries. It runs on air, just like compressed air. This isn't a work of science fiction. It's a practical solution to the current pollution and energy crises facing America. With a growing concern about climate change, pollution, and the depletion of fossil fuel resources, this is probably the clean and green alternative that most people have been eagerly waiting for. Now, how does compressed air power a vehicle? The AirPod uses technology to maintain compressed high-pressure air inside its tanks. The same air works to actuate a piston engine, which in turn converts the stored energy into mechanical power and propels the car forward. Result. No toxic emissions other than smoke and exhaust. The AirPod only emits air. Apparently, that's supposed to allow the vehicle to emerge completely emission-free. Compare that system with the average electric vehicle in the United States today. While it seems that electric vehicles could be a reasonable alternative to gas guzzlers, they are very dependent on lithium-ion batteries. Despite their high efficiency, lithium-ion batteries are not only highly expensive to produce but also pose significant environmental challenges, particularly in terms of mining and waste disposal. This has led to significant concerns about environmental sustainability and human rights abuse in various parts of the world. Since the AirPods compressed air system does not contain any rare earth materials, it's generally considered greener and more sustainable due to its earth-friendly approach. It's clean, producing no hazardous byproducts and posing considerably fewer environmental risks. Now, let's look at what the vast majority of American consumers consider as the final factor in buying an electric car. While their prices have been decreasing over the years, EVs still remain costly for the average consumer. Think of the typical electric vehicle brands, Tesla, Nissan, and Ford's Mustang Mach. That's a lot of moolah for advanced technology, ranging from $30,000 to $100,000 for the market-available models. Indeed, most American households cannot afford to invest such a substantial amount of money. What the AirPod 2.0 does is turn that on its head. A rough estimated asking price is $10,000. Yes, $10,000. It becomes one of the cheapest green cars in the U.S. It would be a game-changer for city commuters and small business owners wanting an armada of cheap vehicles. Let's face it, soaring fuel prices and the ever-increasing cost of living in big towns and cities call for a vehicle that's not only dirt cheap but also zero emission, such as the AirPod. The sense of affordability doesn't stop at the purchase price of an AirPod, it also significantly reduces running costs. You won't have to spend thousands of dollars on fuel or deal with the hassle and expense of installing an at-home charging station for your electric vehicle. The use of compressed air is infinitely less costly than gasoline or electricity. Filling up an AirPod at a compressed air station or using home-based compressors, therefore, is simple and quite inexpensive. It is beyond all doubt that this will make the AirPod highly attractive not only to personal buyers but also to every company and dispatching service wishing to cut their transport costs. In size, the AirPod 2.0 is minuscule. It was created for urban conditions and is simply perfect for American cities like New York, San Francisco, or Chicago, where parking is always a problem. It allows for tight parking spaces where larger EVs would have difficulty fitting. Just imagine running along busy streets without the slightest problem finding a spot. Though small on the outside, inside the AirPod can carry many items that most others can't, making it perfect for city drivers and commuters. This AirPod actually has a comfortable capacity for three passengers inside. It would be large enough to drive to work yet have space in the back for carrying cargo, making it versatile enough for most of the chores an average individual would want to undertake. Its compact, utilitarian design lets the AirPod handle most tasks, from grocery shopping to work to small business deliveries. Cities should find it a practical solution that doesn't compromise on comfort and utility. Furthermore, the concept of ecological advantages appeals to the American motorist, and the AirPod is zero emission, no tailpipe emissions, no CO2, no pollutants. Electric cars have no tailpipe emissions, but they do use electricity, 
which, in large parts of America, comes from coal. This implies that electric cars are not particularly environmentally friendly. Most people won't notice that electric vehicles are hardly green since the power grid they draw their power from depends mainly on coal and natural gas, depending on one's location. Well, the AirPod is unique in yet another way. It runs purely on air, and if you power your air compressor with renewable energy sources like solar panels or wind, it would make a very green vehicle. It requires minimal maintenance, another advantage. While electrics typically have lower running costs than their gasoline-powered counterparts, there are still a few expensive components, with batteries being one of the most noticeable. Battery degradation, costly repairs, and specialized parts all add up over time. Compressed air systems are far less complex than EV drivetrains, meaning fewer parts are subject to wear and tear, which translates into long-term savings. Electric cars rule out expensive replacement batteries. Less design complexity means fewer headaches and lower long-term ownership costs. The AirPod infrastructure is another issue that's close to home for Americans. Even as the number grows, they are nowhere near as common as gas stations. For many people in the United States, the prevailing challenge is that owning an EV would pose a logistical nightmare without having a charging port in one's apartment or house. Otherwise, you're out searching for a public charger or paying exorbitant home charging costs in time-of-use demand rate pricing plans, Either way, a true hassle. But AirPod doesn't need that kind of recharge infrastructure. No plug-in, no wait for a charge. As long as compressed air is in sight, there's hope. One day, perhaps, these sorts of conveniences will catch on here with American drivers. Now on to performance. Designed for city driving, the AirPod 2.0 can reach speeds of approximately 50 miles per hour. Although this speed is too low for freeway driving, it is sufficient for navigating through the city during commute hours. The ultralight vehicle's agility allows for easy control and maneuvering. Finally, the vehicle basically flies about with little more than a whimper of noise. Besides, the noise of the engine makes the trip soothing, a feature embraced very well in most cities across the world, where noisiness can be wonderfully high. Capable of a long reach on just one tank of compressed air, AirPods will make it to 100 miles and will cover pretty much all regular needs of driving, including commuting to work, running errands, and ferrying the kids across the city. Compared to many electric vehicles that can travel up to 300 miles or more, this may not seem like much, but it's important to remember that AirPods are not intended for road trips. Smaller ranges find their place in the daily urban commute. The AirPods range will most definitely cover the majority of Americans who drive less than 30 miles a day. It's practically ideal for the range of an average urban or suburban driver who has the luxury of passing by air stations to refuel on the go. However, daily practicality doubles the convenience factor. Will the AirPod then, in effect, replace their electric counterparts in America? An immediate consideration is how one would define competition. The AirPod just doesn't measure up to longer travel or high speeds. It's simple for a daily driver looking to save money on fuel while traveling from A to B within the city without their car belching carbon everywhere. 